So welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are recreating the Battle of Mill Springs from January 19th, 1861. Uh, this one was recommended by a viewer, so if you've got any suggestions, please put them out there. And also please like and subscribe if you haven't. So the research for this battle came from the American Battlefield Trust Wikipedia. I know, a bit iffy, but uh, I got some good photos uh, sorry, maps and paintings from there. Um, but also, there's a channel called Warhawk. I would definitely recommend you watch his videos. He recreates the battles of the Civil War, and they're really interesting. So today we've got a Confederate force under Crittenden and Zollicoffer, with General Carroll as well. They are attacking the Union force under General Thomas. Uh, Thomas was actually a Virginian native um, who decided that he would stay sort of loyal to the Union and fell out with his entire family. Well, I think it was his sisters actually ended up hating him, but he got back uh, in with his brothers later in life. Um, but yeah, this was one of his first major fights of the war. And he went on to be routinely named as one of the top three Union commanders after Grant and Sherman. So with this battle, the Confederates do start off with um, a larger force, although it's coming on in different phases. <clears throat> Pardon me. Whilst the Union troops start off with slightly more on the table, uh, but by the time the full Confederates are on, if they're massed properly, they will outnumber the Union troops. So the road... Uh, the the whole map itself is pretty well wooded, um, apart from the one area down the centre, uh, where we have our cavalry here and leading up to the hill on the right hand side. So Confederate cavalry came on, uh, trying to reconnoitre and if they could take possession of the crossroad junction, that's the Confederate's objective, whilst the Union had pickets out front and then they had a cavalry unit up on the hill. Historically, the battle was started prior to sunrise, so it was the early morning darkness. So there was quite a bit of confusion, uh, with no one knowing really what was happening, and it would lead to some notable points later in the in the day. <clears throat> uh, so in turn two, trying to get to their objective and race ahead, the Confederate cavalry tried to flank around the pickets and move on up the hill. Uh, unbeknownst to them, the pickets were actually stronger than they thought, and they swung round and started pouring volleys into them out of the uh, little wood pocket on that side of the road, which wasn't particularly good, and they started to lose casualties fast. Union troops, uh, the cavalry, sorry, mounted up and started to get into position to repel the attackers. So having pushed slightly further forwards, they're now getting away from the musket range of the Union infantry. Uh, it was almost time for the cavalry to clash. The Union are at that strange angle purely because if we put them face down, uh, face forwards, they would roll down the hill. So that's what that is. It's not like they're trying to head off the Confederates. And then at the right moment, they struck downhill charge. Although the Confederate forces look like they have more because they've taken several volleys, um, they took a, a hard pounding. And after two rounds of melee combat, they did break. But luckily for the Confederates at this point, General Zollicoffer and his brigade had arrived. And it was now their turn to move forwards and try and sweep aside the Union pickets. Now again, the pickets had fallen back into their sort of more defensive woodline position, and so that was helping them to avoid um, the worst of the Confederate fire. Plus, at this stage, it is still dark out, so uh, ranges are limited. With the Confederate cavalry broken, they're now trying to withdraw back to uh, the board edge. Hopefully, someone will be able to come on and rally them before they flee entirely. 
So turn 3 saw the Union reinforcements starting to trickle onto the battlefield, and also Confederate reinforcements arriving this turn. So all of Zolikoff's troops are engaged, trying to break through the pickets, and now the Confederates have got artillery brought up, so they're able to start as soon as they're they have targets and they can see people, they have to start putting some hot lead down at range. But the longer those pickets held out, the more time the Union had to get their troops onto the hill, dig in and make it a bunker which was going to be very hard to crack later. So turn 4 we had more reinforcements arriving for the Union who started to make their way along and General Thomas himself was now on the hill directing the action. The cavalry, they'd done their job but they were now pretty well spent as an effective force so they withdrew to the top of the hill and then they would sit, um, uh, sorry, set up as skirmishers later in the game uh, but mostly they were finished. Union also had artillery which they were pulling to the top of the hill Every minute that the pickets could hold out was time that they desperately needed. So turn 5, not a huge amount happened for the Union. Uh, it was really just redeploying their troops onto the ridge line. Uh, as you can see the cavalry are back now behind the wooden fence. The pickets, unfortunately, one of the regiments was destroyed in hand to hand. The second wasn't annihilated, uh, sorry, wasn't routed, but was forced back, and so you can see them on the road. However, this put them in the bad situation of now having two Confederate regiments behind them, pretty well at point blank range. General Crittenden himself is also ridden out to the cavalry to rally them. <coughs> which he managed to do in pretty quick succession. So that was very handy for the Confederates, and they would use the cavalry again later in the day. So as I said, those two volleys from the Confederates destroyed the pickets, uh, literally to a man, and killed their commander. Uh, so that wasn't too good. And now it was time for them to muster all that they had to try and push on and take the crossroad objective. Seeing this, the Union start to redeploy. I was playing as the Union in this game. Um, and so I wasn't sure quite where he was going, and which is why I had my troops spread out along the full length of the hilltop. Um, just because of the way the historical battle played out, there was quite a bit happening in the right. But up he came straight down the road, straight towards my artillery piece. Um, and this is where he took some pretty heavy casualties from grape shot and my troops who were in line and behind fences. Historically, during the early hours, uh, General Zolikoff had ridden forwards to try and find out what was going on, and one of the colonels of the Union regiments again had ridden forwards to try and figure out what was going on, and the two of them were just shouting at each other, tell your men to stop firing, you're firing on friendlies. And everyone's like, well you tell your men to stop firing, they're firing on friendlies. Uh, both thinking they're on the same side, until Zolikoff's aide came forwards, firing his pistol off, uh, which then led to pretty well the whole regiment from the Union turning and firing, and so General Zolikoff was killed. Uh, I think he was the first actual general of the war to be killed. And then that paralysed the left wing, uh, because no one knew who was in command, where the commander was, and so it really uh, screwed everything up until General Crittenden could take over. Anyway, back to our game. The infantry punched up the road, lost a lot of casualties, uh, but managed to take the artillery piece out, but had taken too many casualties to be able to stay place, so they withdrew back down the hill and brought up their gun to start blasting away. Uh, the Union tried to do a flanking manoeuvre, but that was checked, unfortunately, and then we basically decided that at that stage, both sides had suffered too many casualties. Um, the Confederates who were attacking wouldn't be able to... Uh, push forwards so they would withdraw 
if we were playing as a campaign game, um, he would have probably withdrawn earlier on when his forces were still stronger. Um, but because it was a single, single battle, we thought we would just try and play it out. Again, from the Union perspective, historically they did pursue the Confederates right back to the river. Uh, but here, again, I'd taken such a pounding uh, that I just wouldn't have had the numbers to be able to do so. But overall, it was a really fun game. Um, I'm enjoying trying to piece together campaigns around the historical battles when there aren't already supplements around. So please give me more opportunities. Anything you can think of, let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.